Oh, the Living Forest set piece, everyone. One of my favorites in the entire game. But hold a beard, the heck are you on about? This to me just looks like a tree sitting among other trees. And you're right, friend, in more ways than one, actually. But there are some hidden dangers in our forest biomes, and we're here today to talk about them. So let's get to it. And the first thing we need to get to is the fact that, unfortunately, a living forest set piece doesn't automatically mean that the set piece itself will actually spawn within an actual forest. For whatever reason, this set piece has a really annoying tendency to generate just about anywhere even within swamps potentially. It sucks because it is a great set piece made even better when it does generate in forests. However, it will likely just stick out like a sore thumb more often than not, as yes, it's a bundle of trees. Which again, just takes away from experiences like this. Moments of panic within bundles of trees. What makes a living forest so great is that it's almost a trap set piece of sorts. You can just be looking to fell a tree as normal, and then suddenly, an entire entourage of towering sentient lumber is just coming to slap you silly. It is great fun for many reasons as we will get to later. However, I also enjoy the little ways to actually identify if a group of trees is about to roll up to the party. For you see, trees don't actually drain our sanities, correct? Correct. So, if you are walking about a forest and suddenly notice a sanity drain starting and there are no totally normal trees around, that should be your first red flag right there. Oh, but it gets better still, folks. Notice how these trees are actually swaying in the wind as one would expect a tree to do. Sure, of course you do. You're smart. Now, do you also notice how these ones aren't? Oh yes, folks. Tree guardians who are resting or pacified don't move in the breeze. Make note there. But of course, the easiest yet most boring tell is the whole chop versus attack prompts when wielding an axe and hovering over trees. It is simple. One will provide wood, while the other can and will murder your face off if it gets the chance. And now with that in mind, we enter the territory of how to actually go about handling the potential 10 plus tree guardians per set piece. Tackling them head on is a terrible idea, but pacifying them is absolutely ideal. And to do so, plant pine cones nearby hostile tree guardians, and the closer they are to you, when you actually do plant the pine cones, will actually increase your chances of pacifying them. There's just one thing though, that you must not do following this, and that's chop another nearby tree. Otherwise, all the tree guardians will simply awaken again, which is not going to help anyone. However, with the group pacified again, there will be nothing to stop you from just targeting one tree guardian at a time, as they aren't much of a horde like mob really, unless of course a tree is hit nearby them. So wake one at a time, fight one at a time, and it's easy all the time. And if you do in fact identify a living forest without actually accidentally waking the majority of guardians, there is nothing to stop you from doing the exact same thing initially as well. But let's talk some other ways to potentially minimize the dangers here, or even take advantage of it folks. For one thing, there is actually a range at which tree guardians react to us felling trees. So. If we wish to, we could very well plan accordingly, and maybe perhaps just spawn a mere two to three guardians at a time, to make things a bit easier. And I mean, I don't really see the point in doing so, and you'll have to have some skill to kite more than one, but sure, whatever floats your boat I guess. But for the most part, what will float the boat for most folk is bringing along a friend or two to actually draw the aggro away from them. And as we should know, any mob that can fell a tree can actually spawn a tree guardian. 
However, some mobs, like Pikmin, can just straight up identify a sleeping guardian and attack it right there. But the note to take home from this is actually that once whatever spawned or aggroed the guardian is dead, the guardian won't suddenly switch to you and come to target you. Good stuff. And this fact is exactly why I tell many folk to just use tree guardians against big bats. And this set piece is just like the ultimate boss melter due to that. Walk a deer clops or badger into a forest, have them fell a tree nearby or just hit a guardian straight up. All the guardians will then aggro on them immediately while ignoring you. And in no time flat, they're both dead. Seriously. Guardians can deal roughly 200 damage to other mobs when they're fully grown, and that's just nuts in and of itself. So combine 10 of the suckers, and it's just utter destruction for boss after boss after boss, as guardians have a nice health pool to boot. Yup, it's great stuff. And the best part, none of the guardians will be pissed at you after their fights, so you're free to finish them off one by one. But why would we want to do such a thing? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps it's the six living logs per tree guardian that could potentially go into accessing tier two magic crafts, many tier two magic crafts themselves, which happen to be some of the best in the game, many ancient crafts that are indeed the best weapons and staffs in the game, bramble armor and traps, beefalo saddles, mushroom planters, which I just love, and much more. Yup, living forests can work wonders for our living log situations, especially with how rare tree guardians can tend to be at times. But speaking of rarity, many folk believe this rare set piece here is also considered a living forest, and to all that, I say baloney. For one thing, there's no bloody trees, you goofballs. For another, it's more related to the dead survivors than a living forest set piece. Sure, fortified tree guardians, just wandering around is a good find, but it ain't no set piece forest. And there you have everyone, a rundown on the living forest set piece within Don't Starve Together. As we have discovered here today, ones you encounter may not actually reside in forests, and I'm sorry for your loss, but nothing to stop you from taking advantage of them regardless. Thanks for watching folks, well wishes to all, Timber, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.